All right, we're going to finish the rest of the notes for 6 and 9. I want you to remember that if you do the derivative of ln to the x with respect to x, that that's 1 over x. That's the formula we have for derivative. So if I do the integral of 1 over u du, that's going to give me natural log of u plus some c. Now again, the u is not just going to be a single variable like this x. It's all by itself. If you look over here, you see the denominator is a little crazy looking. So you need to put absolute values around this because if you recall, you cannot take the natural log of a negative number. So we're going to put, we're going to put uh, absolute value every time for whatever this is here. And when you get a crazy fraction like this, I hope you see oh, most of the time if you get a fraction, the biggest exponents in the bottom, you're going to let that be the, the uh, u part. So we're going to let u equal the denominator. And when I do the derivative of this function, that is going to be uh, 6x minus 2. Now we have to take the dx that's here and multiply it over. So if you look, we got the entire numerator here, 6x minus 2 dx. That right there, because it's in the numerator, it's a grouping symbol. That right there is your du part. So this is the integral of 1 over u, and I stick du in for the, the top part up there. Okay, so the integral of this from the formula right there is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus some c. And then we want to take and stick our u thing back in there. So this will end up being the natural log of 3x squared minus 2x. And you're going to put your absolute value on there plus some c. So that's going to be our answer. Coming over here, again, you might think it's secant squared, but the derivative of secant squared is going to be 2 secant reduced by 1, derivative of secant, secant tangent. That's not going to do us any good, so we're going to let u be the tangent of x because du is secant squared x, and we multiply the dx over here. So if you look, there's our numerator, there's our du. So we're going to have the integral of 1 over u du. When I do the integral of that, that's the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And then I'm going to stick in this tangent deal. So it's a natural log of the absolute value of tangent x plus c. That's our solution. Okay, going on to the next one. All right, now these are the if you do the derivative of arc sine, I hope you remember arc sine is the same as the inverse of sine. These are the same thing, this thing and this thing. If we did the derivative of this, we get this stuff out. The derivative of each of these things gives us these numbers over here. So this is working backwards. If you get something with a radical and a binomial, something in the bottom, it's going to be one of these. And I'm telling you, this is the one that's their favorite on the AP test the arctan. Now over here is the ones you're going to see the most because these are the same ones over here. We've already, I don't know, I don't know if we've done these. I don't think we've done these yet. These are the basic forms when you, you just have x's. Over here, you're going to have more. Your u is going to be a little crazier than just a regular x. So I think these are going to look like these for the most part. So something you ought to notice is there's no square root on arctan. And if you look on uh, arc secant, it's got a variable and a square root out in front. See this? So I hope you notice that. Uh, and then uh, this is just the, the constant minus the variable part. A is a constant, by the way, here. It's just a number. So we got we to kind of memorize how these things look over here. So these, these are a little bit difficult because there's a lot to remember, a lot of little fraction things and all that kind of stuff in them. So over here, okay, that is not one of those problems. Are they at the bottom there and I missed them? Okay, that is a different kind of problem. Let me look here real quick. Looks like I forgot to take a picture of one. So I'm going to take a picture of this real quick because I don't have these in there, which is not good. So I put it in a different spot. So I'm going to go on for a
I think that's what it was. All right, so we're going to carry on. So if you notice, I've got a square root here. Got a square root problem in the denominator, which clues me in that it could be a straight up u substitution. You might think it was like the original ones, but if you put u equal to the thing in the denominator, you're going to get a du of negative 2x, but there's no x, and you cannot create x's or destroy x's. So what you got to realize is, is you got a number minus x squared. So what we want to do here is we want to let u. We want, I'm going to go back and show you this one because it's a number minus. Now, if you notice here, you got a squared minus u squared. We got this deal here. So we want, we're going to be using this one. So what we need to think of here is that. Uh, I went the wrong way. Sorry. So a squared equals four. So since a squared, the constant is four, that means a is going to be two and we don't take the negative one into consideration. So we're going to let u equal x. Okay, we're going to let u equal x because that's x squared. And we're going to now plug all that stuff in where it goes into the formula. So this is the integral. Uh, I guess we really didn't even need to do that on this one, so I'm, I'm going to leave it the same. So this is two, oops, I left square root off, two squared minus x squared. Okay, so in other words, your a is two. Okay, your a is two, and I should have left this a dx. Because x, that's, that's just a regular old x squared. So what we're going to get here is we're going to get arc sine. And you can leave, you can write the word arc sign or inverse sign. I'm going to go ahead and write arc sign because let me go down because that's what they have in the in the notes. So we're going to write arc sign. Okay, so that's where we start. And then we're going to have u over a. Well, u is x because it's really it really doesn't change anything. So that's x over two because the a is two, but I, I you can leave those x's because they're not any different, and we put a plus c. Now, do you notice this one does not have a radical? So since this doesn't have a radical, that tells me this is going to be an arc tan problem. This is going to be arc tan. So we're going to let u equal 9x squared. So du is going to be, oops, sorry, I lied. Because we want to rewrite this as it's kind of like squares down here. So we want to think of this as being 3x squared right there. That's that's what the u is. Because if you take 9x or 3x and square it, you get 9x squared. So we're going to let u equal the 3x. So dx is going to equal the, I'm sorry, du is going to equal the 3 dx. So we got to create a 3 and we have to destroy a 3 out front, just like we've been doing before. So when I write this in terms of u, this is going to be one third integral. And now I got du on top and the three dx on the bottom. I've got a two plus u squared. Okay, now a here is equal to two. I'm sorry, a squared is equal to two. So a is going to be the square root of two on this one. So we're gonna we're gonna redo this thing just like the arc tangent says to do. So it's gonna be one over a. Well, we leave the one third in front, okay, and then that's times one over a. Well, a is radical two because this is a squared. A squared is two, so a is radical two. Then we got the arc tan, and then we have to write u over a. And u is 3x, so we're going to put 3x. I'm going to erase this over a. And again, I'm just erased it, but a is still radical 2. And we got out here plus some c. Well, that right there is going to be our answer. Now, they, they might, they probably would rewrite this as 1 over 3 radical 2 arctan 3x over radical 2 plus some c. We got one more to do here. Now I got a radical with an extra x out there. So that tells me arc secant. All right, so arc secant. Now you, you got to ask yourself, 
how do I get, what would I square to get 4x squared? So that'd be 2x squared. So there's my u, whatever I'm squaring to get that part there. And a squared is equal to 9, so a is going to be 3. Okay? So we're going to do this, this problem. So we're going to let u equal 2x. So du is going, oops, I don't need a fraction bar, is going to be 2dx. So I got to create a 2, and I have to destroy a 2. Oh, I got to create the 2 down here. I need this to be the u part. Oh, so I got to create, I got to actually have a 4 over 2 here because I need a 2x dx. I need this 2x because u, this has, in the formula, this has to be u and this has to be u squared. So since u is 2x, I had to create a 2 here and then I need an extra 2 in the top. So I had to put it, create, destroy the 2 down here with a 2 up there. So I had to actually make that 4. Now this is creating an extra 2 total. So I got to destroy the extra 2 down here. So the 2 times 2 is the 4 that destroys with that 4. This is going to be one half. I'll get this out of the way. And then we got arc secant. Oh, I forgot one over A. So we got a one over A out here. This is one over. Now remember, A was three. So I got a one third here. And I got arc secant. Let me erase this up here. And I'm gonna, I've already got my U written down here again. So I got arc secant, and then it's the absolute value of u. I guess I should leave these u's and plug them back in in a second. Absolute value of u all over a. Well, a is 3 again. And then plus c. So the last thing you're going to want to do is stick this 2x back in up here. And then you'd probably simplify this to 1 6 arc secant. Absolute value of 2x over 3 plus c. And this would be your solution right here. Okay? Coming down here, it says uh, here's a slight integration part. Okay, now this is where when you do a derivative, you've got extra stuff in here. So this is kind of hard because you can't take that x and distribute it in a square root problem. So you're going to have an extra x here. So we're going to let u equal... When we do this, we're going to let u equal the part inside the radical, like always. And then du is going to be 2dx. So I'm going to create a 2. I'm going to put it over here, though, because there's something i got to show you. And I'm going to destroy it out here to get my du in there. Now, this is where you've got an extra x out here that we don't know what to do with. So when you don't know what to do with it, you're going to take this problem, and you're going to solve that for x. So... We're going to take this minus 1 and add it over. And then we're going to divide by 2. So x is equal to u plus 1 over 2. Okay, so what that allows me to do is, I got my 1 half here, I got my integral. In place of that x, I can put u plus 1 over 2 in for that. And then here I got the square root of u. And I get to put du in there for that 2 dx. Now I take this 2, I'm going to bring it out there with that, that 2 and have a fourth out front, and I'm going to have an integral. Well, because of space and time, I'm going to change this to a rational exponent, and I'm going to distribute this u to the half to both of these. So this is u to the 3 halves plus u to the 1 half du. So now I can take and I can do the integral of each part individually. So that's going to keep a one-fourth in front. Then I'm going to take u and add two halves to three halves, which is five halves. Put five halves on the bottom or flip it upside down. Then I'm going to add two halves to one half. So this is going to be u to the three halves over three halves or flip it upside down. And then I got a plus c. Last, I'm going to distribute one-fourth to the coefficients. So I hope you see both these twos will reduce with one of those and make this a half. So this is going to end up being one-tenth because that's one-half because those reduce that to a two. One-tenth and in place of the u, 
I'm going to stick this 2x minus 1 back in. 2 to the 5 halves. Plus, again, I'm distributing 1 fourth over here. That 2 and that 4 reduced to a half. So this would be 1 sixth. I'm going to stick in that 2x minus 1 again to the 3 halves. Plus C, and there's my answer. Now you might, they could put this in a radical and this in a separate radical, but we're going to leave it like that for now. Okay, I got another one here I'm going to do. I'm going to erase everything, so I got room. This is very similar to this kind. Again, your radical's on the bottom, so we're going to let U be that part on the bottom. Okay, you because you want a monomial down here if you can get it. That's why we're going to do this. So I get this, so the derivative of u is going to equal dx. So I just picked du in for that. So if you look, I got a whole bunch of extra stuff up here, but there's an extra x. So when there's an extra x, I take my u part and I solve this for x by subtracting the, the, my, the plus four over to that side. So I get to put u minus four in for that x. So this is gonna be the integral of two times u minus four plus one, all over the square root of u du. Now I'm going to distribute in the top and I'm going to get 2u minus, let's see, that's 4, so 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1. And then I'm going to put this as u to the half in the bottom. And then I'm going to get 2u minus 7. And if you recall, oops, I should have this still on here. If you recall, when we have a monomial, we split that monomial up. So then we take u to the first over u to the half. So one minus a half is going to be, I left the integral and du off again. Don't do that. The integral of two u to the one half, and I'm gonna bring this up with a seven, minus seven u to the negative one half du. Now I can do the integral of this. So I take and add two halves to that power. So I've got this two that's in front of that. I get u to the three halves and I flip that over and that's gonna be two thirds. I got this minus seven and I'm gonna add one to, to negative a half which is positive a half and I'm gonna flip that upside down and that's two over one which is two plus some c. And I'm getting close to done here. So here this two times two gives me four thirds and then I'm going to stick this x plus 4 back in for my u. Here I got negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. And I'm going to stick my x plus 4 back in for my u. And that will be my answer. Okay, we got a couple more here to do here. All right, now this is different because you have definite integrals. You're no longer going to have plus c's. You're going to plug your numbers in where they go. So we're going to plug numbers in where they go. So we're going to do this problem here. Again, this part in here has got a power of three out there. So I'm going to let u be the part inside the parentheses. And du is going to equal uh, 2x dx. So I got the x, I got the dx. So I'm going to have to create a two and destroy a two. So now I'm going to have a one half, and then I'm going to have an integral. I am not putting the numbers here on purpose, so don't put the numbers in there yet. U to the third du. Now here's where it gets tricky. The integrals that we had up here, this zero to one, were for x variables. We now are dealing with u variables, so we're going to plug zero and one in for this x to get our new integrals. We want new intervals here to go with the u. So we take zero and we stick it in for the x and we get the bottom interval now has to be a one. Then we got to take that one, this one here, and we stick that in for the x. And now my u interval is on the top is going to be two. So you must change your intervals when you're doing this. And by doing that, you do not have to plug x back in anymore. So we got one to two here. So over here, I'm gonna have one eighth. I'm gonna take that four out there and then I get to stick top one in minus the bottom one in. This is gonna be one eighth and this is 16 minus one. 
So this definite integral would end up being 15a. It's pretty tough stuff. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I got a radical, so that tells me I want to let my u be the bottom part. So my du is going to be 2 dx. So I got to create a 2 and destroy a 2. Because I need a 2 dx there. And what's the problem? I hope you can see there's a problem in that we have an extra x. There's an extra x in the top part. So since there's that extra x, you cannot create and destroy x's. We have to move this thing over and solve that for x. So I'm going to add 1 over and divide by 2. So I get to put in u plus 1 over 2 for this x. So I get 1 half integral. I got that 2 is going to stay there. Well, actually, it's not because the 2 dx is the du. And I'm going to put this u plus 1 over 2 in for that. And then down here with that 2, I've got the square root of u. Now, this 2 is going to come out with that 2 to be a fourth. I'm going to change that u in the bottom to a half, and I'm going to stick it under each one individually, like we did up here a minute ago. And now I'm going to simplify this so that I've got a u to the half on the top. I'm going to bring this one up to the top and make it a negative exponent up with that, that one. And now I can do each of these individually. So I've still got one fourth. And I'm going, oops, you know what I didn't do? I didn't change these. This said one to five. So I got to plug one in here. Two times one is two minus one is one. So this stays one under here. And this five is two times five is 10. 10 minus one is nine. So I didn't, I should have done that second. Right after I, way up here at the top, I should have changed these into U intervals. Something this is common to forget. All right, so we're going to come down here and we're going to get U to the three halves, all over three halves, but you flip three halves over and get two thirds. And then this is going to be U to the one half and we divide by a half or flip it over and get two. And we move our intervals over to here. So we're going to get one fourth. I got two thirds and I'm going to stick nine in first. And then minus, and I'm going to stick ones in. So you can see these things get pretty complicated. They take time. They are not easy. You need to practice these. Okay, so I'm going to start in my innermost brackets and start simplifying. I'm going to leave this a fourth. I'm going to leave this a two thirds. And I told you this on a video the other day. When you got a fraction, do the square root of the number first. So the square root of 9 is 3, and I take 3 to the third, that's 27. The square root of 9 is 3, 3 to the first is 3, so this is 2 times 3. Over here, square root of 1 is 1, 1 to the third is 1, and I'm going to go ahead and take 1 times 2 thirds. Square root of 1 is 1, 1 to the first is 1, and 1 times 2 is 2. And I think I'm going to go ahead and make this 6 thirds. Let's see, is that the right? Yeah, we're going to go ahead and get common denominators. What the heck? All right, so I still got one fourth over here. I'm going to make this a constant, so that's nine. Nine times two is 18 plus six minus two thirds, and six thirds is eight thirds. So that's 24 minus eight thirds. So I think I'm going to go ahead and get a common denominator back. So it probably would have been better to get. This is 54 thirds right here, 54 thirds, and this is 18 thirds. So 54 and 18 is going to be 72. So this is 72 thirds minus eight thirds. And yes, you may have to do this kind of thing by hand on the test. So you got one four, 72 minus eight is 64 thirds. Okay, and the 4 and the 64 reduced to 16, so this is 16 thirds. Pretty tough, pretty tough stuff. Oh, I thought we were done, but I think we did this one, didn't we? Example 8, did I already do example 8? 
I got them in the wrong order. They're six. Example eight. Yeah, we did example eight. Cool. Is that the same one we just did? I think it is. Yep. All right. We don't need to do that one again. So it looks like I got. I do example nine as a question. Go over here and see if that was nine down here. Did I do nine? I did do nine. There's nine. So it looks like I took the same picture, the same thing twice. All right. So I think this is the last last two problems. Finally, sorry this is long, but you got to practice this. So it's going to be all over the place. All right, so it says if the u, if the substitution of u is x over two for this function. Now this is, I think this is probably an old AP question. Uh, we want to know how can we rewrite this integral in terms of u over here. So if u, if u equals, and I would make that one half x instead of x over the other one, we get du equals a half. Okay. So we're going to have this look right here. So if you look, oops, I forgot my dx. I need to create, I need to create a half and destroy a half. Because I need a half dx. So that means I need to create a half. Now to destroy a half, you got to put a two out front. Okay. Okay, so u is a half dx. So all right, so when we plug this stuff in, this two is gonna stay out here. We're going to have 1 minus u squared here. And we got a little bit of a problem. There's my 1 half dx. That's my du part. But I've got an extra x here. So guess what I need to do? i got to take this thing and solve it for x. So x is going to equal 2u. So i got to stick a 2u down here. Okay, now I'm going to take this 2 out here with this 2, which goes to 1. And then I'm going to have that u under each individual part here. Oh, this is a good problem to look at. Okay, so the integral of 1 over u, this is the only time this happens. When you got u to the first, this is the natural log of the absolute value of u. Over here, oops, uh, I'm going to cheat. This reduces to just a regular old u to the first. So we are going to get minus u to the second over 2. And then there's something I did not do way back at the very beginning. Do you see we have a, a definite integral of 2 to 4? I've got to plug those in over here to get my new integral. So I plug 2 in there. Half of 2 is 1. Plug 4 in there. Half of 4 is 2. So these are 1 to 2. This is 1 to 2. Oh, you know what? I didn't even have to do this part. So let's see which one of these they want. Do they want this one? See, this, this 2 would reduce with this 2. So they, yep, they want the 1 minus u squared over u, and those 2's reduce. So they want 1 to 2, 1 minus u squared over u du. You see how they did not change the, ver the uh, intervals here to there? So some people might choose that by mistake because it looks right. The problem is you have to change the intervals to 1 to 2. Twice differentiable function f and g are defined for the real number of x over here. Values of f of x, g, and x for various values of x are given in and it says evaluate. Okay, so this is going to be a toughie. Evaluate this problem for all this information down here. All right, so what we want to do here is we want to let u, we're going to let u equal, and you got to pick one of these three things. Well, what I see here is that if I take, let u be f of x, the derivative of f of x is f prime of x. So I'm going to let it be the f of x part. And if I do that, my derivative of f of x is f prime of x. And I take the dx over here and I stick it on the end. So if you look, this right here, that right there is my du. So I'm going to have the integral of g prime u du. Now, you got to be careful here because I've changed my variable from x's to u's. So that means u, the bottom one, is uh, when uh, x is 0. That means I need f of 0 to go on the bottom over here. So f at 0 is 1. So this integral becomes a 1. And then i got to put a 5 in here, f of 5. That's this f of 5 right here is 3. So this becomes 3. So the integral of g prime u is going to be g u from 1 
to three. And then the fundamental theorem of calculus says you plug in the top minus the bottom. So G of three, three is here. G of three is three. If I stick three in for this. And G of one is 10. So I got minus 10. So this whole thing would be negative seven. So that is tough stuff. These will take you a while to get used to, but you need to do every problem on these to practice them. So I will see everybody in class the next time. And I'm sorry these take so long, but they're not easy.